Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. How many of you glad to be in church on Wednesday night? Amen. I'll tell you what I am. I have been looking forward to being here tonight. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of recording for our Wednesday night services. Everything's been online. Uh, but I'm glad to have the family back together tonight in the middle of the week. Some of you... Uh, the only chance you are able to attend our church is Wednesday night. So we're just glad to have you back. want to let you know that our kids' programs are taking place. Our youth program is taking place. Our nursery uh, is open. We're just taking all the precautions that we can. And uh, But I'll tell you what, I'm just ready to worship the Lord tonight. How about you? Amen. I'm ready to worship God in this house and in this place. Amen. Why don't we just stand tonight and open up this service with a word of prayer and just ask God to bless. Heavenly Father, I'm glad to be here tonight. Lord, I'm glad to worship you in this place. And this is what this service is going to be about tonight. It's going to be about magnifying you and worship you, worshiping you and lifting you up. And Father, I'm just believing, God, that you're going to uh, touch us deep in our hearts tonight. And God, you're going to bring transformation you're going to bring renewing. God, Father, you're going to take dry places and make them watered again, Father. I just believe that. And I'm just believing tonight, God, that you're going to just minister to every person that came into this place today. But, God, we're going to do our part. We're going to lift you up. We're going to magnify you. We're going to praise you. God, we're not going to hold anything back. I know it's Wednesday. I know we're a little tired from the work week, but God, we're going to come into this place for the next few moments this evening, and we are going to honor you in this place. Lord, you're just so wonderful to us, and I just want to thank you tonight, and I want to give you praise in Jesus, Jesus' name. Somebody say amen tonight. Amen tonight. Amen. How many of you love the, the blood of Jesus and what it means to us? Amen. Let's sing tonight. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious and pride. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's time. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious this. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power. Just blood of the land. 
Hallelujah. We give him praise. Come on, would you one more time? Would you lift your hearts, hands, voices, whatever you want to do, and just praise him right now? Lord, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are. We just thank you, God, for everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we sent you and we feel you in this house tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In God good. Amen. 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 Before you're seated, turn and wave at someone. I think that's what we do nowadays right now. But uh, say hello and you may be seated tonight. It is good to see you here in the house of the Lord with us. And uh, we are uh, doing everything we can to still social distance. If you were here Sunday, our crowd was pretty full and finding places hard to seat with our uh, pews divided off. But that's a good problem. And we'll add a few other seats up front here uh, this Sunday in case that happens again. Uh, but I'm just thankful about what God's doing. I'm thankful for that people are coming to God's house. And I think, I think we were ready to come to God's house. How about you? I was ready to, when they were glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so it's just good to be here. I want to let you know that tomorrow morning our food pantry is open uh, from 8 to 11. 8 to 11 tomorrow, so if you uh, need some assistance, if you know someone that does, please let them know. Uh, Our hours have shifted a little bit. They used to be 10 to noon, but we're doing a drive-through from 8 to 11. It's getting hot, so that gets us out of here a little quicker, Uh, and so uh, we appreciate that. I appreciate all of our volunteers that are so faithful to help us uh, each and every week, and we just say God bless you, and thank you for all you that support the food bank. Uh, in your giving. That is also uh, a great blessing. Uh, Also, church is happening Sunday. Amen. And let's be here. The only thing that is still uh, different is that uh, we will not have Sunday school. So please remember that. We'll start at 1045 on Sunday morning. Uh, But we we would have trouble uh, doing social distancing in some of our classes. Uh, The class I teach next door is, is a pretty full class, so that would be very difficult. So we'll give it this month and see what happens. I'm ready to get back to Sunday school. I miss getting to teach Sunday school. And uh, the rest of you are going, well, I miss the donuts. But the teaching's pretty good, too. But we do have, have some good pastries. But anyway, uh, we are looking forward to that. It's just an, an added blessing to get more of God's Word and, and to get teaching. So uh, we'll let you know when that starts back up. Uh, also, I just want to say to our first-time friends that are with us tonight, I met a few folks, that we are honored to have you this evening, and just welcome, and we just want you to feel at home, and uh, thank you for being in the house of the Lord with us tonight, amen. And uh, we want you to come back. If you don't have a home church, come back. We'll love on you as a family, and uh take care of you, I guarantee you. And uh, so we appreciate you. We love you. Invite somebody Sunday. Come on, bring somebody out uh, to the house of the Lord. I uh, want to just uh, let you know that, and just talk about the offering for just a moment. Thank you for your giving and your faithfulness to the kingdom of God. Uh, we do, first off, have offering boxes on the back wall that you can drop your tithe and offering those boxes that say tithe and offering, that's what they're for. And there's one out in the foyer at the info desk, but you also can give online. In fact, we have several ways of giving here at the church. There is a new app uh, that we have that if you download on your phone, it's very convenient uh, to do it that way. Uh, there were a few people questioning how can you split out to different departments early in the morning. I got up about 6 o'clock the other morning. I was sitting in my chair, and I said, I'm going to figure this thing out. And could, would you believe 57-year-old me figured out how to split things out when other people couldn't do it? And uh, so asking me to train you might be difficult. But uh, anyway, uh, you just have to push the right button. That's what I found out. But anyway, so that app is a very convenient way to give. You can give online at our website through PayPal. And so we just thank you for however you give, your faithfulness. I do want to tell you God was faithful to our church during Uh, the time that we were not having services. He was good to us. He not only blessed us through you, he blessed us through other avenues. And we're just greatly appreciative of that for what the Lord uh, has done. And uh, I never feared, 
but you never know. And that was the, the thing. I don't think anybody of us knew what we're going into right now, what we're going to be facing. But what I do know is just as I preach during our, our time not here in the services, God is faithful. And he's faithful all the time in our lives. And so I'm very thankful uh, for that this evening. Amen. We, uh, I want to let you know what's going to happen tonight. We're going to come back. We're going to sing another course now, or is that later, Angie? It's later. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and minister tonight, but what I want to uh, let you know is I want to do things a little different tonight. I'm not going to minister a real long time. Now, from a Pentecostal preacher, that doesn't really mean much, okay? A long, not, not a long time. Uh, but I plan on ministering just a few moments. But uh, my focus tonight is, is why we're here. And we're here tonight to worship the Lord. You see, we have this distinct privilege to not just get to come to church on Sunday, but we can come to church in the middle of the week, amen, and gather together as the body of Christ and worship God. But why are we here? We're here to worship Him. We're here to magnify Him. We're here to praise Him. So what I'm going to do right after I preach, I'm going to give you give a few of you an opportunity just to stand and praise God. After being quarantined for all this time, amen, and being locked up, you ought to have a praise on your heart. So, amen. We're not going to put anybody on the spot. I'm not going to call you by name. We don't do that here. But I want you to be thinking, and uh, I hope I have to cut you off. Amen. But uh, I want you to stand and just praise God for what's on your heart this evening. I want you to turn with me in Psalm, in the Old Testament, the book of Psalm. Let's go to the thirty. Fourth Psalm. The 34th Psalm. My wife is not here tonight. We are not fighting or having problems or anything like that. Uh, you know, my wife works a public job and she is swamped uh, right now and had a really uh, overwhelming day and a lot still to do. And so uh, just please excuse her tonight. She misses you and uh, she'll be here Sunday, of course. Psalm chapter 34, let's just look first at verse number 3, just part of verse number 3. And it says this, O magnify the Lord with me. O magnify the Lord with me. Amen. We, we know what a magnifying glass is, don't we? Amen. So when we begin to praise God, we are magnifying the Lord. In other words, when you take that magnifying glass and you put it over something, what happens? Some of you go, I can see. No, it gets bigger. Marcus said it. It gets bigger. It gets larger. And so when we begin to praise God, we magnify him. And he begins to get larger to us. Now, we don't change God's size, right? He's still God. But to us, he becomes Larger, We begin to magnify him. We begin to lift him up. We begin to give him the attention that he deserves. So magnify the Lord with me. If I were going to title this sermon tonight, it would be the reason we are here. The reason we are here is to magnify him. The reason we get to come to church on Wednesday nights and Sundays, but it's Wednesday night right now, is because we come together to magnify the Lord, to, to lift him up, to praise his holy name. And tonight we gather here for the first Wednesday night since March the 11th. Did you realize that? Since March the 11th, 83 days ago. That's been a long time to not be in a Wednesday night service. I appreciate hearing from many of you and going, man, I'm missing Wednesday night. I'm missing being in the house of God. And I know, I know which one of you never told me that, but some of you told me, hey, I'm, I'm, I sure miss being in church on Wednesday nights. I'm picking with you tonight. But 83 days. Would, have you ever thought? I would have never thought that would have ever happened. Not being, I mean, things can happen in the world and we don't shut down church or church doesn't get shut down. But the reality is we never know what's going to happen. The good news is we don't have to be sitting in here to praise God. We don't have to be sitting in here to magnify God. In fact, we found that out. While we were not able to come together in a corporate body that we could still have a church. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, in my, there I am in the midst of them. Uh, and so we also have to realize, I don't know about you, I can have church by myself. 
It's okay. I can worship and magnify the Lord myself. But, but 83 days, I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad that you are here tonight. Some of you I haven't seen probably in 83 days or more. And it is so good to see you this evening. And I'm sure you feel the same about me, right? Amen. There we go. Uh, but although we haven't been able to be here, God has not left. And his presence is still all around us each and every day. Tonight, what is different over the last couple months, we've actually just come to the house of the Lord to worship him corporately together, which is what we need to be doing. There's something good about corporate worship, something good about being together. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged tonight. How about you? I'm encouraged to be with one another and to praise the Lord together. Now, the opening text that I, that I read tonight sums it up for how I feel about being here in this service this evening. I'm so glad that we can now worship the Lord on Sundays and Wednesdays again. And as far as that goes, any other day during the week if we choose to do it. So tonight is about worshiping Him. It's about magnifying Him. It's about praising him. It's about lifting him up. I love the praise and worship songs tonight. All of them were just awesome this evening, and I, and I felt the worship on the inside of me. Amen? So it's about worshiping God. It's about him. It's about how wonderful and how awesome God is. You know, we don't have to think very long to know how good he is and to know how awesome and wonderful and faithful uh, that he is to our lives each and every day. That's just who we serve. The world can let you down, but God will not let you down. Now, in chapter 34, in the first four voices, I, verse, I'll get it out in a minute, verses, in the first four verses, the psalmist focuses on worshiping and praising God. And I wanted to read that to you tonight, and then I want us to praise him for a few moments this evening. It's okay, and if you don't stand, then it's okay. But I want us to praise God. You know, growing up in church, we used to have testimony services all the time. That wasn't unusual. And I remember some anointed testimony services throughout the years that I pastored. I remember a lady, when, when I first came to pastor here, she went here the first few years. Sister Rhonda is going to know who I'm talking about, but Sister Ethel Pittman. And Sister Ethel was already in her 80s when I came to pastor. But, but Ruby, you will remember her. And when she started testifying, she got out in the aisle. And she started testifying. I just sat down. I mean, it was, it was over at that point. She wasn't taken over the service, but she was anointed in her testimony and her praise to the Lord. And so she just began to magnify and worship the Lord and, and speak prophetically, amen, and, and talk about the glory of God. And I'll tell you, I, it was a great time. And so I'm accustomed to that throughout the years. I'm accustomed to it from being raised in a Pentecostal church all of my life. But look at Psalm 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at what? All times. I will bless the Lord not just part of the time, not just on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, but I'm going to bless the Lord all the time. I'm going to bless him with my whole life, how I live each and every day. I'm going to bless the Lord. In fact, he said that one of the ways I'm going to do it is that his praise shall continually be on my lips or in my mouth. His praise shall continually be here. You know what? We need to be careful sometimes because we let some things come out of here that, have, that don't look like praise at all. Can you say amen? But if we'll purpose in our heart to bless the Lord at all times, I can tell you that his praise will continually be in our mouth. He said, my soul, come on, this is talking about getting deep, shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Listen to what he said in verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord. Some, come on, right now, magnify him with me. Lord, we just thank you right now. Come on, do you know how to magnify God tonight? Oh, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are amazing. God, you are wonderful. God, you are everything to me. 
Lord, I just magnify you tonight. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt, exalt. You might go, what does that word mean? That word means lift up. Let us lift up his name together. Who other, what other name is more important than the name of Jesus Christ? What other name is more important than God, the heavenly father? Come on, so we need to lift him up in this house tonight. We need to lift up God in this house and praise him and exalt him and lift him up. Let us exalt his name together. He said this, I like it. And this scripture's just been bubbling in my heart all day. I sought the Lord. Let me tell you, if you're ever going to get anywhere with God, if you're ever going to have a deeper relationship with God, you're going to have to seek after God. You're going to have to chase God. You're going to have to go for it. The psalmist said, I sought the Lord. Come on now. We need some people that are ready to seek the Lord and go after him. To desire to have more of God in their life. To realize it's not about me, but it's about him. Now, there's something interesting the psalmist said here. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. Wow. I sought the Lord and he heard me. I sought the Lord and I had his attention. Come on now, is that okay? I sought the Lord and he, and he heard me. He heard Andy Hunt blessing his name, magnifying his name, worshiping his name. He heard Lanita Downs magnifying him. And he heard her. And he heard Rhonda and he heard different ones that began to to magnify the Lord and to lift his name up and exalt it because they were going after God. I saw the Lord and he heard me. Now this sentence, this verse ends real well. He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. There's a lot of fear going on in this world right now. We've been faced with a lot of possible fear over the last three months and and now our streets are rioting and we need to pray for peace immediately to come to the streets of America. Amen. But let me tell you, when you get your eyes on God, when your heart begins to chase Him, you get His attention and He will deliver you from all your fears. May I tell you tonight, I am not afraid. I have no fear in my life because God is on my side. I have no fear because my daddy is right here. I have no fear because if I utter his name, he hears me. Praise God. So the key is tonight, the reason we're here is to worship him and to magnify him and to praise him. And that's what we need to do. Sister Angie, let's just sing a chorus tonight, and then we'll have some testimonies after that. Can we do that this evening? Amen. Come on, let's worship him tonight. Would you do that? Would you do what I just spoke to you about? Let's magnify him. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great. Come on, you tell him that tonight. Let it be personal. Sing with me, how great is our God. 
great is our God tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just go ahead and be reseated. And I want to know who wants to praise God first tonight. Who just wants to lift him up? Linda, go ahead. Talk loud, everybody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was just, Sister, I went to church with Sister Linda as a child 52 years ago. Amen. That's a long time to know somebody. She's been the same Linda all that time. Amen. She said, I changed. I got better. Amen. I, but uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone else want to just praise God? Yes, Lenita, stand and praise him. Talk loud. Almost two years, I haven't really been talking to my daughter or my grandchildren, um, which was by her choice because of her lifestyle. A lot of times when they're uh, chosen not to serve the Lord, they separate. And, and even though she separated from me, I would still reach out to her and to call her. And a couple of Sunday nights ago, the Lord put it on my heart. We were in worship to reach out to her. And I asked her, could the grandkids come and visit this summer? And she said, yes. And not only did she say yes, well, I was supposed to meet her in Chicago to pick them up. But she called me back and said, you know what, I'm going to bring them to you. Uh, So not only is she just allowing me to see them, but she's bringing them to me. And I'm just like, Lord, I thank you because I didn't change. And I stood on God's word, believing despite what the world would say, despite people saying that we got to compromise and give in to the stuff that our children may be doing. But I thank and praise God for even the testimony. I don't even know what's going to transpire, but I'm believing God that the prayers that I've been praying are still yet to be answered, despite everything that's going on in the world. If Corona had to happen to stir up to bring her back to visit me or to be able to pick up the phone and come and see me, to God be the glory. So um, I'm Angela, and a lot of y'all know me. I I came to church here from October 2015 to August 2018 and have been back recently. And for years had been praying, and a lot of y'all know this, praying for a husband, for God to give me a husband. Dated a lot of different people, and, you know, God would always remove them when I would really get sincere and ask God, is this the person for me? And if they're not, remove them in the name of Jesus. And my God came through every time and removed the people that he needed to remove. As a matter of fact, last November, I said that prayer. On a Friday morning, said that prayer. And that night, my God answered my prayer and removed a man from my life that I thought would eventually possibly be my husband. So that man was removed from my life. And I've even over on this side of the (laughs) sanctuary where I would normally sit, cried many tears, tears, but tears believing and knowing that one day God was going to answer my prayer. But my prayers had been, Lord, I'm believing that you're going to give me a husband. But if you choose not to, I will praise your name anyway, no matter what. I will praise the Lord. And I stood fast on that. And as earlier this year, praying my prayers, praying for my future husband and saying, God, I realize it may be someone I already know. And I knew that. I said, I could already know this man. John was a friend of mine. In February... February, I can't even explain it to you, but my God, but my God, we started dating in February, and then March 20th, I get a letter from my work that I had made it through the cuts on March 20th, I had made the cuts, and that my job was safe, okay, my job is okay, I'm told, I've made it through, March the 21st, 
he proposes to me and I accept his proposal and we knew we were getting married very quickly that next Friday, March 27th. Okay. There's no waiting around. We're getting, we're getting married. We're doing this. We don't care what's going on. And so, but that week on Wednesday, now I'll tell you how my God takes care of me. Okay. Wednesday, I find out, oh, we didn't tell you effective this past Monday, your salary has been cut in half, cut in half. Well, I have to let John know this man, you know, he's agreed to marry me and I have to tell him, and by the way, I'm coming with half the money that I would come with. But guess what? That doesn't matter. That's not why I'm marrying you. I don't care if you have anything. So when I needed a husband, God provided a husband for me at just the right time when I needed a husband. And so our God is faithful and he will answer our prayers. Amen. Do you want to praise God for her or not? Okay. No, I'm just, I mean, I'm messing with you, John. Because actually I have been praying for the same thing because I've been asking God what he has in store for me and what I need to do with my life because I was a Christian, but I still needed to change my life. And he answered my prayers. And my prayers were answered on my birthday because we got married on my birthday at 51 years old. Mm -hmm. But she does know that I get two gifts on that day. She gets one. That's my birthday. He's got my birthday. Amen. Our women's ministries director, Sister Pat. Well, I just want to praise God because he is so faithful to um, fulfill his promises to us. Even though sometimes it seems like it takes a long time and we pray and pray for things. I've been praying for some of my children to come back to the Lord. And just recently I was talking to my son and he started reading the Bible again. And so, and he and his wife are going through a Christian book on marriage and they're working through it together. And so God is faithful. Even I'm, I'm still praying for a couple of my other ones, but I know that they will come to the Lord because God has already promised me that. Pat has more than a couple other ones. She has eight to be exact. So... She has eight kids. I have five. <laughs> yeah, I have five. Um, my name's Michelle. I'm just a Wednesday nighter, but um, that this is so perfect. It, God is just, I have a 16-year-old son, and uh, a few years ago, he, he's a guitar player. He's been taking guitar since he was real little, so he's gotten real good, and he started playing a lot of the really hard metal music, you know, and um, he really liked it, and I didn't want to be that mom that you know, griped at him about it. So, you know, I was just praying, you know, Lord, just, you know. So every now and then I'd say, son, why don't you play some of the Christian music, you know? And he'd be like, because I'd be a bad guitar player then, Mom. I need to play the really hard stuff, <laughs> which is not really what I wanted to hear. But anyway, I noticed uh, that this music started taking its toll on him, that he was getting very depressed, hanging out with some people that were putting ideas in his head. He was talking trash a lot and um, just I just noticed a total decline in his whole he would be real uh, like introverted and just going you know when he was normally just a real funny and outgoing and wanted to be around the family he got where he just go in his room and you know shut the door and real closed off and and so you know I began to get worried about him but I, I, I just kept on praying and I thought and then the Lord told me one time while I was praying he said I need you to talk to him and I went Yeah, right. So, but he didn't mean it in that way. What he meant was for me to speak out of my mouth in spirit to him, say his name. I didn't do it when he was around, but I'd go in his room when he was gone. I'd anoint his bed with oil and, and, and pray over the pillow. And I'd say, Connor, you love godly music. Connor, you're a worshiper in spirit and in truth. Connor, you're a righteous man of God. 
Connor, you love the Lord with all your heart. You have a heart like David, Connor. And I just started talking to, talking to him, but he wasn't there, you know, to hear it. And uh, so my husband said something to him not, not that long ago. Now it's been, you know, a few months now. And I mean, okay, so things were, I found out later that he revealed to me, things were a lot worse than what I thought that, you know, for him than what I thought he was going through. It was even worse than what I had imagined. But anyway, but uh, there was a breakthrough, and it came so much faster than I imagined. I mean, I I was praying, so obviously I wouldn't have been praying had I not expected God to do something, right? I guess I just didn't expect it to happen that quickly. (laughs) But I mean, he, my my husband said to him, son, have you ever checked out the Newsboys or um, Jeremy Camp? And started listing off some of the ones that had good guitar players and stuff and he's like no he started listening to it and y'all I don't know what I don't know what how I don't I don't know but all of a sudden it was like whoosh, this turn around he is happy smiling again he is in his room I walked in his room y'all and his room he had cleaned up his room and he's got like five guitars you know and he ordered this new guitar and he's been playing worship songs. He's been pairing, playing all these Jeremy Camp songs. And before this happened, he has a really good voice, but he wouldn't use it. He was embarrassed. He'll be up at, like, all hours just singing worship songs real loud. Loud, y'all, loud. Like, wake up the whole house loud. And my girls are complaining. I'm like, don't you stop him from doing that. <laughs> but, but, no, he, he is singing songs and just praising the Lord. And I went in his room, and his Bible was open on his bed, and he's listening to Stephen Furtick and and texting me, Mom, you know, uh, what what does this verse mean? And he's just all, and, and he's bringing his friends with him, and I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful, because he really does hear us. Moms, our prayers are real important. Amen. Don't give up on your babies. Amen. Praise God. Travis, you want to praise God? Check the time. I don't know. This is good, though, isn't it? Yes. I got a praise after I got laid off, and Jesse's truck that evening blew. And about three and a half hours later, got a call. She was given one. Wow. wow. Thank God for it. Amen. Yeah. yeah, just out of the blue, God blessed him with a car after theirs had blown up. It, is that God? Yes. Isn't he an on-time God? Amen. Amen. Somebody else want to praise him tonight? Hey, Cortez, come here. How you guys doing today? Um, well, I just want to just say, um, just give God thanks just for what he has done in my life. Um, you know, as over this past like month or whatever, I, you know, finally graduated or whatever. But I just really want to thank God for just what he has done my entire life and where I could have been and where I'm at now. And I just want to thank God, especially for my mother. Like a lot of people like don't know what she, she ha- she does and what she has sacrificed so many, so many things down the um, years to just be able to give me plenty of different opportunities. And I just want to, you know, thank her, but also just thank God for being able to give me her to just be able to put my life on the right path. So. I don't know what the other 20 kids are like, but he's good. Amen. Say amen. Do I have to stand up? Okay. Um, I am thankful that God brought Justin and Addie into my life. Um, We've both been through a lot. And then um, I'm just glad that he brought us all together. Amen. Amen. First time here tonight. Great to have them. That's Robert's brother, better looking brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to praise him real quick? Amen. I'm, who's, who's pointing? Oh, I thought you were pointing. You're... You don't want to turn the mic over to me. Um, I have to praise the Lord. And I have to talk about the God that we serve, how faithful he is. And... 
many of you are here, and I want you to think back when this all began. God began to show me as this virus came to light. And he began to show me and reminded me, if you will remember, a few weeks prior to us ever hearing about a virus, God had people come forward to be prayed for for a spirit of fear. And when this virus first, and I have told people this, that don't know God, and it's a powerful, powerful witness. And they said, aren't you afraid? I said, no. I wasn't afraid to begin with. I said, but let me tell you about my God. I said, my God goes before us, and he makes a way, and he loves his people. And at my church, a few weeks prior to this, there were about 50 people that came forward and our pastor was impressed. There were tongue and interpretations, and the pastor was impressed that, that he needed to pray for people about fear. God brought that to my remembrance as he began to show me months in advance the things that he had already began to do. My grandson that's in the back, Dylan, back before the holidays, some of you don't know, but I had two grandchildren that I had adopted and raised, loved them dearly, still do. (laughs) And my youngest one, the oldest one, went to live with his father about three years ago. Um, And I let him go out of love because as much as I loved him, I knew he needed a dad. And the younger one, little Zachary, he was my little ADHD guy, and he would go to therapy and we'd talk about the problems he'd have in school. And I remember his therapist saying, you need to let him go to his dad. I said, I can't. I've had him since he's two years old. I've raised him for 10 years. I can't. And I remember he said, the thing I know about you is you're very specific in your prayers. I said, you're right. I said, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I can't give him up. But if it's God's will, he'll lay it on Zachary's heart. Zachary had told me from day one, I'll never leave you, Nani. (laughs) I'll be with you forever. I said, that's okay. I don't think you even know this story, Pastor. Church camp. He went to church camp. And he came back and he said, Nani, I had an experience with God. I said, well, tell me about it. He said, well, they had us throw a cup into the bonfire, and that represented our struggles and our the things that have us, you know, that we just have a hard time overcoming. And, and I don't know, Nani. And he just looked at me and I said, baby, you can say anything to me. He said, what's going to sound crazy? I said, well, I've done crazy before. Come on. Tell me what it is. He says, I think God's telling me to go to Iowa. And I looked at him and I said, baby, you're right. I said, God is telling you to go. And so... That's the kind of God we serve. Because if we're specific enough with him, I can tell you so many things. As you know, my daughter had a heart attack and stroke in the hospital. According to man, she should be dead. And I remember going in that hospital room and the doctor said she's dying. And I stood by that bed and the devil whispered at me and laughed and said, I've got her. She's mine. The Holy Spirit rose up within me. And said, oh, no, you don't. The Holy Spirit says you brought her to me. And I began to pray. And I said, God, this is not what you promised me. We talk about praying for our children. And I said, this is not what you promised me. I will not let her go. He does not have her. She walked out of the hospital. Is she serving God as she should today? No, she's not. God gave her a second chance. God was faithful to my prayers. And just recently when the virus started, she was at my house one day and she was getting her stuff. And I walked out and I told her, I said, I want you to know that I love you. And I said, I want you to know that what's going on in the world right now is you need to get ready. I said, because God is winding things up. I said, and he's going to begin to pour out his spirit and you're going to begin to see the move of God. And I want to see you in eternity with me. And know that I will continue to pray for you. I'm not giving up on you. But more importantly, God is not giving up on you. And then as you talked about, and I'll wrap this up quickly. 
I lost my brother two weeks ago. And for most of you, you probably know it's hard to witness to family. But when my brother needed prayer, he would call me. If he needed prayer for a friend, he called me one day. He was on the job and somebody, he was a stagehand and something had fallen on him. And he says, sis, you got to pray. I think this man's going to die. He said, but pray. And I did. He didn't make it. But God had a plan for his life because we all have a time. So during the midst of all this, as I was taking care of my brother, because he had dementia and stuff, I got up one morning and the Lord stopped me and he said, go pray for your brother today. I just dropped everything I did right then and I said, okay. So I went over there and he was at the top of the stairs and um, he came down the stairs because he couldn't breathe very well. And he kept saying, oh Lord, oh Lord. Now, he wasn't a Christian, but he believed in the Lord. Uh, and I said, speaking of the Lord, <laughs> I said, let me tell you that God wants you to invite him into your heart. He says, I don't know how to do that. I said, I'm going to walk you through it, brother. I said, just repeat after me. Took him by the hands and he prayed. Two, as the pastor said, two months to the day he was gone. But I want to end on a ha- on on a, I want the church to be, get excited about this, because I had a dream just the other night, and in this dream I was standing in this sanctuary, and we were all collectively praising the Lord, and all of a sudden it was like we were in the it, we were in the throne room, we were standing before God, and we were praising Him, and when I woke up. I was startled to be here. And God says, that's where I'm taking you. That's where I'm taking my church. And I've seen and I've begun to see how God is beginning to move. And we're not to be discouraged by what we see. Just this morning, you talked about peace. And the Lord laid it on my heart. I need my people to pray for peace. Peace for our leaders. Peace for one another. Peace for our children. Peace within our church. Peace wherever you turn. God wants his peace to come about. And God has, I can't tell you what God has for us. And we are privileged to be here tonight and to be able to praise him and know that I I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm excited. Come on, would you stand with me across the church tonight? I know others want to testify. Let's sing again right now. Amen. Is our God. Come on, you just heard some wonderful testimonies. Sing with me. Let's thank you. Is our God. And all will see how great is our God. How great. How great. How great is our God. I feel like we just magnified the Lord in this house. And I know some of you others want to praise the Lord tonight. We'll do that another time. But 
Listen, we all have something we can praise God for tonight. Come on. Now, we heard some amazing testimonies tonight, I'm telling you. Amen. I thought about the scriptures. I was listening to some of them. I am that I am. Come on, if you need a husband, I am that I am. A wife, I am that I am. A mother, I am that I am. Amen. God will be whatever you need him to be. Amen. And I thank God for the testimonies that we've heard tonight. Folks, I believe revival is here. Amen. Come on now. I believe revival is here. You see, the devil says I can bring a coronavirus into this world and I can shut it all down. But I want to tell you, God's able. Amen. 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 Brother Helms. Amen. That's a testimony. Amen. 65 years serving God. Hallelujah. And, and almost 90 years old. Amen. And is busy, stays busy, stays going, works in the food pantry every time it's open, both days, him and her. Amen. And uh, amen. God's been faithful. Now, I'm kin to that guy, so I know God's been faithful to him for at least... Uh, 40 years or more, but God's been good. Amen. Amen. I love you, church. I just feel like we got to go to church tonight. How about you? I feel like we got to go to the house of God tonight. Amen. Come on. Bring, bring the same spirit back Sunday morning, covered in prayer, bathed in prayer. Let me give you a few things to pray about. Sister Ruby Hunt lost her brother, Robert. Robert, I'm saying that right. Uh, Their funeral is tomorrow down in uh, Sweeney or Bay City, somewhere down there. But let's pray for her family. Uh, We want you to know that. Pray for Brother Lee Sawsley and Sister Joyce. uh, Lee is really on hospice, and and they say he's not got much longer. Of course, they said two and a half months ago he had two weeks. He's still here, but he's still sick right now. Sister Joyce uh, just had a procedure. Uh, Also, just uh, pray for John and Darlene. I know that one of them baby both of them were having a procedure uh pray for them uh just others in our church are sick right now need a miracle in their body things are slipping my mind but uh anyway just put people on your prayer list okay i just want to challenge you to do that let's pray tonight father wow what a time together what a time together god i was so blessed by the testimonies that magnified you tonight god you are the answer to everything that we have need of you, you are. God, there's nothing too hard for you. God, that young boy listening to heavy metal rock music and learning to play it, nothing's too hard for you, God. God, finding a, finding a husband or finding a wife, nothing's too hard for you, God. Father God, just miracle after miracle after miracle. God, we just thank you tonight. And our trust and our faith and our hope is in you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us online for our Wednesday night service. This was our first Wednesday night since all the COVID-19 stuff took place. And we were just so glad to be back in the house of the Lord. And what a great time we had as we just magnified the Lord here this evening in praise and worship. And even in a part of our service toward the end, uh, as you heard, we had some wonderful testimonies of what God had done. And there was just such a wonderful spirit and a wonderful presence here. Uh, We missed you from the service, but I hope you got to uh, see this and in its entirety, and I hope that it blessed you. Listen, I want to encourage you to come to church Sunday. Our service is at 1045. We are still not having Sunday school, but we are having our morning worship. So I hope to see you this Sunday at 1045. 45. We are going to have a good time in God. God bless you. This is Pastor Andy Hunt. Hope you have a good evening.